Growing your own food is relatively straightforward. Even a modest amount of space will generate a surprising amount of produce, of fruit, of vegetables, of herbs. The piece I've selected here is quite small. It's four meters long by three meters wide. Now, there are a couple of reasons I've chosen this particular piece of ground. Number one, it's quite level. It's quite straight and it's quite uniform. It doesn't undulate too much. Number two, it's facing south. So that's important because there, there's three categories of vegetables. You have fruiting vegetables, you have root vegetables, and you have your green or leafy vegetables. And they have varying requirements when it comes to sun. Fruiting vegetables require the most sun, root vegetables are mid-range, and then the least amount of sun is required by your green or your leafy vegetables. So the fact that this is south-facing will satisfy the requirements for all three categories. It's also important in terms of successional planting. When your greens and your leafy vegetables are done earlier in the season, you can use the space thus vacated to put in your fruiting vegetables. When it's deeper into summer, again, you're facing south and they're gonna get those warm temperatures that they need. Setting up your pot is relatively easy. So in this case, I have four pegs. So four meters this way, three meters that way. So I have, I've measured using my tape and I've put a peg at each outside corner. You can square it up if you want. You can measure your diagonals and make sure that they correspond in both ways. Once you have your pegs in the ground, you need a piece of string. Now, the reason I use a piece of string between pegs is just for neatness. Anything we do, we want to make sure we're doing it in a, in a tidy, clean and orderly fashion. So, on the outside face here, I have a piece of string going from this peg along the four meter run that way. So, what I'm going to use is my spade and using that piece of string as a guide, I'm gonna make sure I split that saw nice and clean, nice and sharp, staying faithful to that line as I go. What that will ensure is that when I, when I do that on all four sides and I have a nice split saw, I go inside and I start to strip that saw to remove it. When I get to this point, it's gonna strip really cleanly and nice and neatly along that line, thus ensuring that I have a nice straight edge. We'll be removing that sod in step two.